What happens when you mix fireworks and bullets together? <coughs> Nothing good, I can promise you that, but when you take the pyrotechnic compound out of a firework and put it at the base of a bullet, you get a tracer. But just because tracers are on fire, does that mean they're more lethal than their FMJ counterparts? And another question I've always wondered is if you and I were being shot at with tracers, would we be able to see them coming? Fortunately, we don't have to be the ones standing around to answer this question, thanks to this TA target gong and some cameras. Now, I'm assuming our odds of seeing it are better the slower the bullet is moving, so let's start off with the fastest option, the 556, and then work all the way down to the 22 LR. And this is what a regular FMJ looks like, just for comparison. Yeah, I don't think we're seeing that one coming. How about the tracer, though? I'm gonna venture to say no, but I was looking through the scope and I saw this big red flash as soon as it hit the target. It looked freaking cool, but I don't think we'd see that one coming. Coming in slightly slower, we have the 762 by 51 and this one's a little bit weird because it's a delayed tracer, meaning that it only starts igniting around 100 yards to not give away your location, which is nice, but I don't think we're gonna see this bullet coming at all. Here's a standard M80 just for reference. Yeah, definitely not. How about the tracer? I mean, it kicked me off target way more, but I, st I didn't see any flash, really. Moving right on down the line, we have the 7.62 by 39 this time around, and supposedly this one is an instant flasher. We'll see how that changes our odds up, though. Here's a standard ball round, just for reference. Yeah, no, we're not seeing that one. How about the tracer round? Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're getting somewhere. I watched that one go the whole way into the steel, and then I looked over at the velocity, and all my excitement went away. The bullet was going a thousand feet a second, almost a thousand feet a second less than the ball round. No wonder I could see it. Yeah, yeah, just get on to the part where your gun blows up. Coming in even slower yet, or I guess I shouldn't say that because I don't think it'll be slower than 7.62 by 39. We have the 30 carbine. And again, here's a ball round just for reference. Ooh, I got lucky there. <laughs> There's just no adjusting the sights, and I'm having to aim way bottom right just to even hit there. Tracer? I was really excited about that one, but I really didn't see anything from behind, so I think that means we probably wouldn't see anything down there. Our last hope is a 22LR tracer. Hopefully, we could at least see this one coming. We're going to be starting off with the CCI standard velocity, just for reference again. I just watched that thing float in there, so with the right lighting, I think we could probably see that bullet without a tracer, but how about the tracer? Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Now that is what I'm freaking talking about. I watched that one just float in there, looked over, it's below the speed of sound, so we had to be able to see that one. The scary thing to think about is that we wouldn't have time to react. I mean, just imagine that. You hear the shot, you see the bullet coming in, and then you're like, <gasps> And then that's it, it just smacks you right in the face, game over. But if we're being completely honest, some regular bullets would probably get to us first because 99% of the time tracers are used, they're used in machine guns. Typically every fifth round because when you're spraying and praying, you really don't need to see where every single round is hitting. Also, when you're spraying and praying, you don't know what you're gonna hit. So the next question I wanna answer is if tracers are any worse at penetrating steel than their FMJ counterparts. And this time around, we'll be changing things up from fast to slow to slow to fast. So let's throw a 16th inch piece of mild steel in there for the 22 LR. Not not like I think it has a good chance of going through, but we'll see. Come to think of it, I don't know why 22 LR tracers exist, but they are so freaking fun. Whoever came up with them is a genius. I really appreciate Hickory Flatboards for sending these ones over, and if you get any, I mean any of the tracers at all, do not shoot them by a dry field. Yeah, I messed it up. Good shot placement, so, and it is so freaking cool watching that tracer just sink in there. Wait, Terry, what do you mean it's not cool? Oh, because you think it's going to melt you. Oh my gosh, freaking ballistic torsos. Anyway, obviously the 22 LR is not good at penetrating steel. Looks like there's a burn mark. 
What the hell is that little guy doing anyway? Looks like there is a burn mark with the tracer and they appear to be the exact same. Oh my gosh, Terry. That was a close one. You better be careful, buddy. And why do you look so shiny today? It's like somebody left you in a hot car. Terry, who did this to you? <laughs> 30 carbine, on the other hand, should be quite a bit better. And the most steel that I've seen it penetrate is 3 sixteenths of an inch. So let's drop that in there, you know. Assuming I can actually hit the 3 16 inch plate, I will try to get the correct holdover, whatever that is, but no promises. Okay, apparently there will not be any more shooting with the M1 carbine. Something just blew up in my face. I'll have to review with the on the slow-mo what that was. I, I don't know if it was out of battery and it went off or what the hell went on. That was freaking crazy. It smacked, I think it smacked my glasses too. That's why you always wear glasses, guys. But it got all over my forehead. Blew out the freaking magazine right here. And I, I, ju I don't know what the hell just happened. Holy shit. And it left an imprint of the... <laughs> piece of the magazine that it blew down to the uh, table right here and you could see the shrapnel and stuff my gosh actually i still haven't looked in the mirror oh shit oh i told you guys it got my forehead it got it in multiple areas that does not look good well it could be worse but God, what it could have been a lot worse i'm just very blessed to be here with all my pieces right now and the absolute worst thing that happened to me that i don't even remember happening was apparently i flicked this little piece of brass or whatever it was off my arm whatever it was it must have been extremely hot because it burned a small hole in my skin so that wasn't too pleasant but the even more unpleasant part is that my forehead which i actually remember this part my forehead had a burning sensation for about an hour to an hour and a half afterward from all the burning powder that hit into it so that really wasn't pleasant at all but this it definitely was the best case scenario given what actually happened and you're probably wondering what happened the short story is that a friend of mine unknowingly gave me some fake imported 30 carbine rounds and i don't blame him at all because they're almost impossible to tell from the outside from the inside though now that's an entirely different story and if you want that full story along with the extended cut of what actually happened i would really appreciate if you checked out the video i made for patreon i don't want to sound like a beggar but it will help me source another m1 carbine because although i did send mine into auto ordinance for them to check out to see if it's still safe to shoot i just don't see that happening i also have some t-shirts for sale but it would really help out tremendously if you just simply hit Hit the like and subscribe button and i think i forgot to tell you the worst part of all i didn't even hit the steel no just kidding that wasn't the worst part of all but uh, anyway the show must go on just without the 30 carbine well that's really all i came to see and since we're talking about 7.62 by 39 this time around we are bumping it up to a quarter inch piece of mild steel they typically go through that and i never hope to see you again in my life oh sorry 22. <laughs> I usually don't inspect the brass on factory loads, but something made me feel compelled to do so. And have you ever seen one that came out looking like this? I mean, what the hell is going... I mean, what the hell is going on here? This is the FMJ case, and it was shot after, you know, the last tracer round. So I don't know if those crappy rounds just leave a bunch of powder in the uh, chamber, or what's going on? Oh man, what do you know? It was a stick bug that hit into me. <laughs> wow, he's down on his luck, though. That makes two of us. <laughs> Holy shit, it's stick bugs everywhere. And this one is looking a lot better than that other one. I don't know what is going on here. They are just falling from the trees. Wait a second, were you the one that hurt Sticky down there? Oh, you're gonna pay. I can just imagine the epic battle that they were having up in that tree. I mean, it is one of the coolest things just seeing that round sink in there, though. And uh, looking at, I mean, it didn't do anything to this mild steel. The other one went straight through. Let's check out the, yeah, I mean, not a bad pinky hole. Wow, I can't believe it didn't even mark the steel at all. That is nuts. Uh, hopefully my forehead doesn't look too bad. I didn't need anything else messing it up, but uh, let's step it up again. And this time around, we're jumping up to a 3 8 inch piece of mild steel since we're bumping it up to a 5.56. Five, sometimes the rounds go through, sometimes they don't so we'll just have to see what happens. Now these tracers are full-blown military M856 and over by Dozer Munitions. I really appreciate it again. I guess this little guy's a fan of guns or noise. I mean, he is not going anywhere. I didn't rip off his leg. It just, uh, he has it folded up to look like an antenna there. But what should we name this evil little guy?
and they look almost identical, at least from up here. Let's us check. It. Oh, oh, that one definitely got stopped. And okay, the regular M193 went right through. The other one got stopped. The M856 got stopped cold. I don't know if that's the base of the copper that got stuck in there or what, but that looks freaking awesome. Let's check out the pinky test. Oh, freaking terrible pinky test. And I think I'll just go ahead and leave that plate in there because although we are using the M62A1, which is linked up with the absolutely insane M80A1, this one does not have the giant steel tip at the front. It is just meant to mimic the trajectory and everything. So because of that, we will be comparing it to the regular M80 round, which usually blows right through three eighths of an inch of mild steel. Again, thank you to Dozer Munitions for making this round possible. Well, things are not looking good through the scope, and I didn't even see a tracer compound go off for anything. Oh, and just as I feared, the uh, M62A1 went nowhere close to getting through a 3 8 inch plate of steel. So not only can it not compete with the M80, the regular one, it is nowhere close to the M80A1. So if the goal is to get to enemies hiding behind steel, I think we've proven that tracers are definitely not as lethal as regular FMJs. But what about the enemies hiding behind no coverage? You know, the ones that are out in the open? I think there's only one way to find out if tracers are truly more lethal than FMJ bullets, and that's Ballistic Gel. Apparently we have a new guardian of the gel sled too. What should we name this guy? Just gave you an evil look. If they're tumbling and on fire, it is going to make for some nasty wound channels. Otherwise though, if they tumble outside the block and they're not on fire the whole time, probably not going to be a whole lot of a difference. Let's start off with the CCI standard velocity though. Oh, you gotta love 22s, all you hear is and there's no recoil, and uh, there's very little chance of it blowing up in your face. There is our shot placement. Let's see how good our odds are of getting our... Yeah, pretty freaking terrible. <laughs> Obviously, it's a 22 LR, though. Wow, it really didn't do anything for the first six inches or whatever that is. Tumbled like a mofo. And then the bullet is... Oh, <laughs> right in between the freaking blocks, so it went exactly 16 inches. Can't complain about those results. Now it is tracer time, and I'll be honest, I have shot this one before out of a handgun, and rifle in my giant 22 comparison video. But I'm really not sure what to expect with the trace around this far out. How is this little guy still here? I mean, I know what's happening here. The one that uh, didn't have any legs or anything cast a spell on you and you were stuck in that position. How convenient. Okay, there's nothing better than that. You get to watch it go in and go freaking awesome. And there is our shot placement. Very, very tiny. Oh yeah, definitely not getting my pinky in there. But let us check out the wound channel. Oh, I, I am not seeing the burn marks like I saw in the other video. Starts tumbling almost the exact same point as the uh, standard CCI round and uh, almost the same wound channel as well. Keeps going. Ke wow. <laughs> dies off pretty quick and yeah there definitely aren't any burn marks like before but let me grab the tape measure and see exactly how deep this round went right at about 13 and 3 16 inches so unless you're super close to the target i guess you're not getting the burning effect now let's step it up to something a little bit larger i almost said 30 carbine let's step it up to the 7.62 by 39 well that would explain it there's all that crappy powder that was used in that round it is dirtying the shite out of the chamber Yep, that's exactly what it was. It done did it again. Oh, you've got to be shiting on my face. The zero is at 25 yards, and I'm having to aim all the way down here to hit, you know, somewhere where I want to at 50. And uh, apparently that time around, it was just a little too low. It came in and scraped the bottom here. So let's try that one more time. Okay, now that one definitely looked better. And indeed it was. I didn't even notice the uh, wood chips down there. That should have been a telltale sign that I hit a little low. But uh, anyway, let's check out the pinky. Freaking terrible again. I mean, it is an FMJ though. So let us check out the massive, massive wound channel. Man, that thing was tumbling. But probably eight inches into the block, we'll see. Well, yeah, 
seven and a half, eight inches into the block. Not like you'd know. Keeps going, keeps, actually starts yawing pretty quickly. Keeps going and straight out the side of this block. Almost looks like it ripped it in half, but it did not. And oh, wow, wow. It left a massive wound channel on the way out. Oh, it is going to be hard to be more lethal than that. I really don't want to put another one of those tracers through there, but uh, I guess we got one more shot left. Hoping I guess to hold correctly, that 1500 feet a second really throws a monkey wrench into the equation. And it did not hit anywhere in the general vicinity of where I was wanting it to. It hit down. Oh, that's going to be a close one. Let's check out the pinky hole and see. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely get it in there a little bit more than the other rounds. Let's check out the wound channel, though, and see. Okay, looks like we're doing pretty good until it takes a nosedive. Wait, bounces back up and goes, wow, ends up right where the other 7.62 by 39 round exited the block. I don't know if it wasn't on fire the whole time. You know, I mean, I saw a puff of smoke in between the blocks whenever I was shooting. <laughs> came in at about the 23 and a quarter inch mark. I'll admit, pretty impressive for how little velocity it's working with, but uh, I think the 5.56 is going to do a whole lot better than that. M193 first. Not too shabby, hopefully. Let's see what the pinky thinks. Yeah, oh, well, I guess it kind of goes in there, but uh, I kind of had to force my way in there, so I don't think the pinky's a fan. Started tumbling a decent amount before the 762 by 39 and it, oh, all these bullets just love hanging the left. The best way to hang. My gosh, and it was going so fast that uh, it started fragmenting, and the wound channel from the side here is absolutely massive. My gosh, wow. It just ripped a massive hole through there. How's that bad to the bone M856 compare though? Man, that thing smoked for a good 10 seconds or so. That was cool to watch. Came in basically right where I was aiming, so can't complain about that. Let's see if we can complain about the pinky. Yeah. Now the interesting part. Okay, so it did start burning, it looks like, through there. And massive cavitation, you know, probably where the uh, 762 by 39 starts. And it just takes a freaking nosedive right down into the uh, table here. And I could see where all the smoke came from. Oh my gosh, I don't know if it lit the table on fire? Oh, I see what happened. It smashed into the table, but it could not get through because of the steel support underneath here. So I guess it just smashed into that and then caused a little fire scene. It's 762 by 51 time. M80 time to be specific. So I came in a little high because I didn't want to intersect with these rounds here, and it looks like the block starts curving down. I, I think it melted down. Wow. Let me try that one more time. Definitely much better shot placement. I forgot to check the pinky on the last one, but we will see. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, that's better than the other round so far, I guess, but not by a whole lot. Wound channel time. Oh, man, a much better shot placement, and it's still curved out the freaking top. Didn't even make it quite as deep into the second block. FMJ bullets be tumbly. M62A1 time. That looked like a freaking smoke grenade went off. Oh man, that one was close to one of the existing cavities, but I mean, a decent amount of ways. Let's check. Much better hole though. Unfortunately, my audio cut out, but this had to be the most insane ballistic gel shot we have seen on this channel by far. I mean, massive devastation. It went 23.5 inches before smacking into the table, and it looked like a freaking laser beam going into that block. I don't know how I caught that shot. Now, does this mean tracers are any more lethal than their FMJ counterparts? I'm gonna say no, but I'm also a little shook up from what happened, so I'd really appreciate if you checked out the Patreon video, and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas.